It's the Wednesday before our show and we are going to take you over to the venue. My hope was to actually get you there before any of my uh, crew started loading in so you could see like the total before and after because it's an old, it was a club back in the 50s and 60s and 70s and people refer to it as the Dirty O, it's called the Olympic Gardens. And then it was a bingo hall for a long time and now it's just kind of a big empty community hall and it's gray and you know not so uh, not so fancy schmancy but you will see that um, my crew turned into a pink palace so we are just downtown we're dropping off tickets to the show at my lawyer's office right now and um, then we're gonna head over to the venue and I'm just gonna give you a little a little tour and what I'll do is at the very end when we're done and they tear out and it goes back to the way it was I'll shoot a little bit for you so you can see just exactly how big the transformation was. Oh yes, there's Pearl up on the back and that was Bruiser you just heard. He likes to... I'm sure he's on this side somewhere. No, I can't find him. Anyway, he's a whiner. So yeah, that's what we're doing. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And uh, there comes Denise now. So we'll talk again soon. Bye. So this is the actual hall. Uh, as I said, they've already started moving stuff in, but we'll let you see what it's like. You didn't plug that it in. Just being painted, so, uh, and, uh, yeah, so we'll... You didn't plug it in, so I'm doing quickly. Uh, What's that? You didn't plug it in. Oh, okay, so this is it. This is like in the building stages. So just give you a big 350 view. And then you'll see how they transform it into like just this incredible pink palace of love. It's quite beautiful when it's all done. And we'll get you in and let you see. Oh, there's Jennifer. Because taking in residence. Or better. Oh, Denise. And this is like yet another yeah. awesome artifact of the candy show. Awesome. Because we have a set guy, Steven, who I'll show you here in a minute. And he does um, mock ups. So for season one, it was like a drawing. This is Steven right here. I say hi, Steven. Hi, Steven. Hey. This is for my YouTube channel. Those are my YouTubers <laughs> that I'll see your retina. So this is his mock-up, which will be artifact of season three of the candy show, which I'll put in the picture box. How cool is it? Look, awesome. he has moving parts. <laughs> it is so cool. Sweet. Okay. Sweet. Check out my chandeliers. Yeah. I had chandeliers in the first two seasons, but I found they were a little bit like old lady chandeliers. But these were the kind I really, really wanted. So Matt just got done putting those all together yesterday, and uh, you'll see those on the set. Steven, is this going to be some kind of fantastic light? Is he on the phone? This is Candyland. This is where Candy's wardrobe room, part of the set. Getting ready to get put together. And I don't know what this is, but it looks like it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> Oh, wait, I know. It looks. It totally looks like it has a cord. Be a light. It has yeah. a cord. It's like very cool looking. Yeah, very candy iced. Oh, you got a, a table this year. A little. Uh, yeah, table. well, I wanted a place where I could put my laptop. As you can see, it's um, it's very uh, multi-dimensional at first. Uh, the set people are kind of doing everything at once. They're building the back of the stage while they're also starting to drape the front of the house with uh, dark curtains in order to block it off. Here I'm just walking behind uh, what the set will be so people at home and watching the show won't see this whole part. Uh, this is actually behind the set. Those are the windows that you'll see from the front. And then this takes us out the side door, um, which is how people come and go. Yeah, yeah, day two. Day two on set. So at, just take a look around. As you see, it's starting to look more like the candy show. So, and these folks that you see here, you won't see after. Um, Lauren's just going through that door back there. Maybe we'll get him to wave at some point. Lauren, wave over here at my YouTube viewers. Wave. That's Lauren. <laughs> That's Matt on the stage. That's Paula with the dream catcher and Don with the red carpet. So you don't see them once the production starts, but it is crazy because this is just like a gray dump. 
and then they come in and make it a pink palace for me. So, and every year there's like oh, something oh. new. Oh, the candy show's going across the stage. Oh, the candy <laughs> So every day we'll show you the progress and then you will be stunned when you see like just how incredible it looks once it's all ready to go for showtime. So again, we'll bring you every day and um, show you how it's going and including on the days when we shoot. Okay, talk to you soon. Now, unfortunately, things got so crazy by the time we started to shoot that I didn't uh, bring you back in to show you, but there's Lauren waving again and that's handsome Matt beside him. Um, two great folks that work on the set. As you can see, the bed is really starting to come together now. They haven't hung the chandeliers yet, but we've got our animal print up. This wall is where my musicians sign after they perform. They sign my bedroom wall before they leave, which was always a part of my original idea of the show when I dreamt it up when I was a little kid. There I am sitting on the corner of the stage just chatting. I like to be there um, as the place transforms because as the building transforms, so too do I transform from the everyday me into uh, Candy from the Candy Show. So uh, this was a wonderful moment for me. I've been a music junkie all my life. And to walk on my set and see all this GAC, GAC just being sound equipment uh, stuff, you know, cases and stuff, all this GAC with pink tape on it with my name on it. Um, it's like the teenage me was just freaking out at the at the sight of this stuff So I had to get a couple of shots of it for my own memories as well as to show you guys like how much equipment gets drug in here To actually run a TV show. It's quite extensive So if you get a whole new section or a whole old section, that's okay. Yes, I will No, and I know how to do that stuff to a certain extent. Say hi Trevor to a certain extent. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, oh, get the leg. Oh, I thought we were full on. I was like, gonna get the old leg going. <laughs> like one of the only two dudes on set taller than me, actually. Him it's and Doug. Grant. Him and Doug it's Betts, buggy. I think. <laughs> and, and I'm hugging everybody and my hair is so stinky because I'm getting it done today. And when you're dying it, you don't want to wash it. Well, God, you it's don't want painful. to. But it's, no, absolutely. It's, it's a scalp away. So, you know, when he gets his done, he sometimes washes his, but. Right, well, I'm getting Brazilian, so I didn't bother shampooing this morning. <laughs> but did he bleach his butt? We don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get your... My next rule. And that was my wonderful director, Trevor Grant. I love they put these little signs up here, keep, keep drinks beyond this point, because all of our production equipment, we've got a bunch of computers and printers and stuff up here uh, for our on-site uh, production manager. Jennifer Camo, she runs everything from up here. So, <clears throat> excuse me, as you can see, she has a beautiful view uh, down onto the floor of the studio and uh, it just uh, allows her to keep everything safe by telling people to keep their drinks away from her That's equipment. Like Although here. comically look there's water, coffee, all kinds of stuff uh, down there. Now on this day <clears throat> the set people uh, are still there to a certain extent but you can see all the sound or sorry all the light is coming in. in the middle with the long hair there that's Doug Betts um, you can see my, my director coming in right next to where I am on the right. But all of these lights have to be put up in order to transform this building into an actual studio. And so it takes a lot of work. There on the left, that's uh, Dean Skerritt. That is my director of photography. So he is kind of the guy that um, decides how many lights we're going to order, uh, what kind of lights we're going to rent, and where those lights are going to go because it's, it's, it's his job to take my vision and turn it into what we actually see on television. So he's always looking at this set uh, through the lens of a camera to make sure that it looks exactly the way we want it to look. And as you can see, there's multiple ladders everywhere. Um, and you know, my crew are up and down those ladders. I get so scared for them because I'm scared of heights, but it doesn't seem to bother them at all. They flit around up there. And of course, there I am. Sitting in the middle of it all, chatting with folks, because I just like to uh, be around as things get set up. Funny from time to time. It's quite funny. It's funny, but if she has a stroke, she better watch out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's never heard. You have to be here between six fifteen and six thirty. Hey, six ten. Six ten. 
Okay. Look at, did you get the bad boys out there okay. smoking? I'll talk to you later. These are the smoker faces from the candy show. These are the bad boys of the candy show. I'm just trying to set a good example for the kids. <laughs> you know, no, we're not. This is, hey, new haircut. It's, uh, you know, Mother Nature kind of made that decision for me. Oh. <laughs> she handsome. At least that. she met mine. <laughs> uh, that's just a black love haircut. <laughs> I went for the Katie Lang. Did you get his eight doobies to the face shirt? Oh. Show your eight doobies to the oh. face Oh. Yeah. Sweet. To the face. Now keep the camera on him and I'm going to kick him in the nuts. <laughs> you too. <laughs> So for the life of us, we can't get Doug to turn around. He has got to be the sweetest dude ever. And he's about, I think he's about six, I'm going to say six, 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 seven, somewhere in around there. Uh, very, very tall, very, very handsome. Uh, and he has grown his hair out, which I like to think he's done just for the candy show. You see how big his feet are? We were talking that morning about his kids saw his shoes at the back door and yelled, ah, Bigfoot. And so it was a joke all the way to school um, about Doug being Bigfoot. So now I will forever think of him uh, as Bigfoot. Here the boys are putting up the tent at the back door. We keep a tent back there just so that if it rains and people go out for a smoke, they don't get wet and they won't track wet directly into the studio. There's a little buffer there to dry their feet off. And uh, those stairs that you just saw take you up to the control room upstairs. There's again just a little glimpse of what the back of the set looks like. The stuff that you won't see on television. And that leads through to my changing room. That little pink area that you saw down the other end. That looks kind of funny. It looks like the top end of his body is a tent. This is probably my favorite area on set. This is my dressing room, which we refer to as Candyland. And as you can see, they really go all out to turn that into quite a beautiful little area for me. And that's because we actually shoot that area uh, numerous times during the season. So it's just behind this curtain, which is wonderful because when the crowd comes in and sits, there'll be tables all here where you see all this gack right now. They are just on the other side of a curtain. So it really helps me to get pumped up because I can feel their energy and, and hear their excitement, uh, you know, just a few feet away from me on the other side of the curtain. And then when it's lights, camera, action, the spotlight hits that curtain, it opens, and out I come, and we start a show. Okay. Yeah, he's a neat winner. And so that's the manual labor of how they get that big string of lights up into the ceiling. It's just these uh, chain winches and they have to keep pulling and pulling until it raises up and then they get up in those girders uh, and they walk around up there like they're little spider monkeys. Anyway, and that's part of what makes the set look so fantastic. All those beautiful lights. So here you start to see how the set lighting works. Um, those screens in the back, those windows, they can put whatever color back there they want. So sometimes when you look at them, they're pink, sometimes they're purple. You can see that little pulse of light that just happened behind the bed. That's just the guys testing all the lights. They control everything. The chandelier, the fact when we're done, there'll be three chandeliers. The lamps beside the bed, there are lights under the bed. They control all of that from the, from the light board and they can make um, those lights dance, change color. Uh, the lights under my bed actually can go almost like police car lights. They flash red and blue, uh, quite spectacular when actually in. when it's all put together. I loved the chandelier, but in the end I felt there needed to be three, so we actually got two more and hung them right there. And as, as the, the development goes on, you'll see how incredible these lights transform the space. So as the camera spans the ceiling here, you see how that whole row of lights is now up uh, into the girders of the ceiling. And from there they will adjust what the stage looks like, what color light splashes onto the stage, how much light. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's quite uh, an incredible process. You see some lights further back. There's also a spotlight. Uh, our friend Tim Jennings sits on the edge, on the edge of this, uh, this balcony and operates that spotlight to make sure I'm always awash in light, which is pretty impressive. You see the, the lights now going purple there on the stage, how they can change what those windows look like regardless of um, 
what color you might think they are. They're just clear, and it is the light that changes everything. That was a big spotlight. This is the uh, out front area when folks first come into the studio, and I'm a big supporter of Feed Nova Scotia, of the food bank. So we ask people, there's no charge to come to see a taping, but we ask people to bring a donation of some food. And if you don't, if you forgot your food, we have little cash boxes there. You can pop some cash into the box because it's great to have a good time and know that you're helping people in the community at the same time. So we raise quite a bit of food and money for the food bank each year when we do this. Here you're getting a look at the bed from up on the mezzanine. When you open the blocks and look down, you have a wonderful view uh, right on top of the bed area. And I interview all my musical guests there in my bedroom. So kind of neat to see it from that angle. And this, of course, is some of the light set up behind the stage to create that wonderful wash of color effect you see from the front. So on the side here, we've got sort of yellowish lights coming in through those side windows. This is the area where the crew eats. Uh, supper is served at about 5 o'clock. We work all day. We eat at 5, and then we let the people in at 6, and we run the show at 7. And here you're starting to really see uh, it's starting to take place. We wrap the building in black fabric so that the stage really pops and you don't get any, um, you know, kind of bad views if the cameras, you know, brush the crowd. We don't want them to see girders or any evidence of the building that was before we moved in. So you're really starting to get the feel here, of what it will look like. Outside here, this big truck from 40, 45 North, this is Chuck Calder, who, you know, if we were in a real studio, you'd have that room where the director calls, where he's got all his screens. Well, because we're creating a studio, this is um, sort of a mobile director's unit. And so, oh, there's Denise's hand in the shot. Um, my director sits in there, Chuck sits in there, and they call the show from in that truck, as well as Neil, my sound guy. Candy, Jake was asking. Oh. Perfect. Look, look at your lamps, huh? Oh, nice. There are two different levels to my stage, and I was really worried about tripping or falling. So my set guy came up with this wonderful idea of spray painting feathers uh, along the edge where the stage drops down so that I can clearly see... Um, where the two height differences are, which is ends up being super pretty, but also serves a purpose of me not falling on my face or breaking my artificial hip, <laughs> which is wonderful. And here, Candyland has finally finished my dressing room. Uh, you'll see that I have a lot of wonderful pictures of my family because they... Uh, inspire and support me through all I do and a lot of pink fuzzy stuff big bong there you see uh, in the corner some lava lamps uh, there's a picture of my mom back in the day uh, it's a lovely piece of artwork that John Jerome Paul gave me there's my sweet Denise my sister and her husband uh, just all kinds of little pieces that inspire me and make me feel uh, comfortable and at home there in my Candyland space. There's one of the old plates from my car. Candy P. These lovely ornaments that were made by uh, made by Stephen Osler, my set designer. That picture you see up on the wall there, that's, that little baby is me in my brother Billy's arms. And Billy's passed on now. Cancer took him uh, about 13 years ago. But I keep that picture in there to remind and me I'll of just, uh, that connection. And of course, lots of pink, we, uh, pink, 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 so everywhere. <laughs> that big shaggy white thing has a light inside of it, so it lights up pink uh, at night when we get things light up. And this is my couch where I uh, take a few minutes to stretch out uh, just before showtime to sort of get my, get my head in gear and get ready to put on a show. So this is really the last bit that I've actually recorded for you. Um, as you can see, we're in the final stages. What I will do now at the end of this video is I'm going to piece together a number of still photos 
uh, with the house full so you can get a, a sense of what it actually looks like when we're ready to shoot and make television magic so uh, thank you so much for watching this video enjoy the still photos of what the finished product looked like and again accept my apologies for not having videos up more recently or more frequently in the recent past it's because of the show took up uh, so much time but i'll start getting those videos including my health vlog back out to you before you know it so here enjoy these pictures Keep your mouth closed for the night, but like climate change, I bring the heat of shows for you. Yeah. Yeah.